my God. We were just talking about the October jobs report. Uh, one industry that continues to face dire staffing shortages, that's restaurants. Competition for workers remain intense, remains intense. Uh, about two-thirds of restaurants say that they are understaffed. That's according to an industry survey. And then there's the soaring food prices, supply chain, log jams, and so on and so forth. So joining us now, the man who knows what it takes to run a restaurant, chef, restaurateur, entrepreneur, and, and I would say personal friend of mine, Bobby Flay. His new show, Beat Bobby Flay, Holiday Throwdown, holiday premieres season. Tuesday on the Food Network and Discovery Plus, I can't wait for Bobby Flay to invite all three of us on yes. this program. No problem. Love Good to, to have see you. you. How Good are to see you? you too. As you're watching the job reports, is it, does it, anything resonate with you and oh, yeah. staffing and all that? What I, does? I mean, the, the thing about restaurants is it's, a, it's, a fo it's an every night focus group of, of how people are feeling about the economy. Right. Um, you know, and what's happening is it's getting squeezed from every sort of corner and edge. I mean, um, labor's expensive. Commodities, meaning, you know, the cost of goods, food, et cetera, is expensive. And, of course, occupancy costs is always expensive. The landlords never look, look out for you. I mean, they're always, you know, they have <laughs> very deep pockets. And they're, and, and they're not going to, they, they don't take the pressure off. On the, on the other side of it, I think the consumers are feeling the pressure as well because they turn on the TV, they, they look at social media, media, and they understand that, you know, we're, we're on the brink of some really bad economy here. And so people, they tighten their wallet. You think that? We're on the brink of a pretty bad economy. Well, they say, you're what saying they think? say we are, and so that affects. Yeah. I do. They, you right? do. You do. I, I, yeah, I mean, listen, uh, unfortunately, I've been around long enough to see this happen before. Yes. And uh, ultimately, we, we're able to come out of it, but you do have to hold on tight. Um, but I, I, I feel like something not good is happening. I mean, you look at all the reports, and I watch what people are, the, the way people are acting in the restaurants. It's a really good meaning, way. Meaning? Meaning like, so the person that, you know, last week was buying a $75 bottle of wine, maybe this week it's a $40 bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. They're making decisions that are actually squeezing the check average in the restaurants. So interesting. And so you, and so you understand exactly that, you know, it makes it very, very difficult. On the other side of it, uh, the restaurateur, the, the proprietor, is having a hard time making profits. So... People that, that want to come back to work, they want higher salaries, of course, and you know you have to be very competitive to get good labor. Yeah, and what does that look like? Are you able to find people? Because I've heard this is a big issue of everyone that was let go by restaurants at the height of the pandemic, now they're having difficulty hiring good people back. Well, we all said, um, and I say we, meaning the, 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 my, my friends in the, in the business, where is everybody? Like, yeah. you, you thought like, you know, the pandemic hit and everybody would be willing to come back to work right away, but that did not happen. We basically, you know, opened the doors and wondered where everybody was. And now people are starting to trickle back. Um, but again, it's, it's very, very, very competitive. And you're right. Listen, Bobby and I both uh, live out on Long Island. And you know Eric Lemonides. Mm -hmm. He owns Almond uh, out in Bridgehampton. I love that and, But people are um, having to provide housing for employees. Uh, for employees because, you know, it's, it's tough. Like, there are incentives. You're having to pay people bonuses. and, and Bonuses, and all... benefits, anything to, to, to make people feel like, you know, this is the place I want to work. And also, like, you know, the, the problem is, is if somebody comes by and offers your employee an extra dollar an hour, you know, that adds up over the week and over the year. And so they, they'll, they'll consider that. So you have to do certain things that are not just about the actual dollar itself to make people feel like they want to stay in your, re in your, in your restaurant or on your bed. What, what can the people who make laws and the people and the, the financial experts, what can they learn from the restaurant industry as it comes to this new economy? What can you teach them? And what well, are they I, I, I can tell you one thing. The, person, the people that are going to be paying um, for this is the consumers. Um, restaurants are going to have to keep charging more money to survive so that they can actually create jobs. I mean, and, and also survive as a proprietor as well. I mean, it's a, it's a vicious cycle at this point, and it's unfortunate. I say that we're literally a generation away of people understanding what it really costs to go eat in a restaurant mm -hmm. and be okay with it. Meaning, all of us, we all pay our own bills. We go to the restaurants, we know that chicken costs $24 at our favorite restaurant. What about, what about if I told you it's gonna be $38 next week? Mm -hmm. Right, Might that's your reaction. So, my, so somebody who's 16 years old right now who's not paying their bills yet, they're gonna, they're gonna feel comfortable paying that because that's what they, that's what they see yeah, and that's see. what they know. Yeah. We're not ready to do that. So, all of this is really important, but 
we have something more important, which is when Don Lemon was on your show. Oh, oh that's right. <laughs> yeah. This yeah, was we the highlight it. of beat. That's right. When life gives you Don Lemon, you make lemonade, baby. <laughs> I watch you all the time. You do. Oh yeah. And are you cooking or are you just chilling? No, I'm usually at home. <laughs> you have this thing where you're like somebody says something that you just take a moment and you just go. <sighs> we'll be right back. I mean, you don't even have to say what you're thinking. Can I remind you, there's someone else here who's like that? Me? You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what did Don Lemon I cook and her. was it good? No, Don didn't, Don didn't cook. He just tries to get me beat. That's his role. I did. I, yes. I caused him to lose yes, his Yes, he did. Because yes, exactly. his burger wasn't as well. And that was Alex. Yeah, um, Alex Bonchelli. Alex Bonchelli. I saw Alex the other uh -huh. night at um, Alba okay. in the city. I tried to, I tried, listen, I try to support local restaurants. Uh, Somehow Don has figured that. out a way to go out to dinner on this schedule. <laughs> Caitlin and I are still working on Bobby, that. Do you know for... Eight and a half years, I did not really get to go out and have a proper dinner because I had a show on at 10 o'clock, and now I can go to dinner. It's, it's expensive. <laughs> it's going to get more expensive, Don. It's expensive. It's That's exhausting. the lesson of the day. Yeah, but she's right. I mean, she held up a mirror to you, and, but I think you are also holding up a mirror to the people who um, are in charge of us about, <laughs> no, I mean in charge of the economy and, mm -hmm. and what have you, about what is to come and how, yeah. what should be done about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... it's um... Listen, I, we'll get through this. Yeah. The bottom line is that nobody knows when and how long and how, how deep it's going to be. But there's, I mean, the, to me, when I look at numbers, et cetera, that doesn't really matter to me. What matters to me is people's attitudes. That's it. 